Tuesday. How many of you know what Tuesday is? Vote day. So if you have not already voted, please, may I encourage you, if you have registered to vote, get out and vote. It will make a difference. All right? So please make sure that you get out and vote. How many of you enjoyed that extra hour of sleep last night? Three people, four people. I didn't get it. I couldn't fall asleep last night. <laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, but uh, get out and vote this week if you would. How many of you know that uh, our president happened to be in town the other day? How many watched that rally? I know we had a few people that were there. How many of you noticed that at that rally, there were a lot of excited people at that rally? Why were they excited? Because the president had showed up and the president was preaching to the crowd that was the choir, basically, wasn't it? And they were like, yes, yes, yes! And they were believing everything he was saying. Guess what? You've come into the house of the Lord to hear the very word from God. I think that's something to be excited about. Yeah. <laughs> I need it. I need a little help. You know what I'm saying? All right. Somebody say, preach it, brother. Let's have a good time. It's the Word. All right? It's the Word. All right, so Philippians chapter 1. How many of you know that a Word can make a big difference? You're still flipping in your Bibles, I guess, huh? A Word can make a big difference. How many of you know if I say you can't, and I say you can, it makes a big difference? How many of you know if I say Trump versus Clinton, it makes a big difference? Oh, sure, you're with that, right? It makes a difference. A word can make a difference. There was a young psychology student who was serving in the army and he decided to do a little bit of a test, a theory on something. And so he drew kitchen duty. And so he went to do his kitchen duty and he was assigned to pass out the apricots. And so he knew that a lot of people might not like apricots. And he thought as a psychology student, this would be a great opportunity for him to do an experiment. So the first few soldiers that came by, he says, you don't want any apricots, do you? And 90% of them said no. So he decided to flip after a little bit of that discussion. and He switched it over. He says, you do want apricots, don't you? And about half of them answered, uh-huh, yeah, I'll take some. So there was a difference. Then he decided to do a, a third test based on the fundamental either-or selling technique. And he asked and he says, one dish of apricots or two? And he said, this is what happened. About 40% took two and 50% took one. I mean, you know that a word can make a big difference. You have heard it said to mind your P's and your Q's, right? You've heard that phrase before. Well, in Mexico, and I don't speak Spanish, so forgive me if I mess this up, but I've heard this, that in Mexico, you better, when it comes to bathing or showering, you better also mind your H's and your C's. Because from what I understand, an H on the faucet means hilado, which means cold, and a C actually means uh, calilante, which means hot. Now, here in America, C means cold. But in Mexico, it doesn't mean that. I mean, you know that you'd get a rude of awakening if you just flip that faucet on there and jumped in that shower thinking that it was going to be hot and it was cold. Last week, we started this little series and we spoke about specifically getting a word from God for your life. And we talked about how believers should have a love for His word and understand that He has given us His word. And we understand that we, as according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says what? It says that we shall not, or we should, excuse me, we should live by faith and not by sight. My last slide that I showed you last week had this on it. It's going to come to the screen. It said, we wrapped it up with, the message basically was, get a word, get a vision, and live by faith. Today I kind of want to expound a little bit more on that phraseology of living by faith and getting a word and a vision. Philippians chapter 1, the very same passage of Scripture we were at last week, starting at verse 12, and we're going to read following like we did last week. He says, I want you to know, this is Paul speaking here, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Remember, he's in prison. 
so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of my, and most of the brothers, having become confident in the in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. That just doesn't seem to make natural sense, does it? I mean, if somebody's thrown in jail, then you're like, I'm going to go run and hide. But Paul said it is proven to help spread the gospel. Verse 18, the second half of the verse, skip down there. It says this. Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that, but that with full coverage, excuse me, courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether in life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And if I live, if, and if I am to live in the flesh, that means a fruitful labor for me, yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to part and be with Christ, for that is far better. How many of you have ever said that prayer before? Come, Lord Jesus, now, alright? But, to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Let me read that again, because I want that to sink in a little bit. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or I am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving side by side from the, for the faith of the gospel. I could probably preach a whole series on that verse alone. And not frightened in anything, but... Uh, by, uh, uh, excuse me, and not frightened by, in anything by your opponents, this is clear sign to them of their destruction by the salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in Him, but also suffer for His sake. We don't like to hear that though, do we? Engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. Here is a man who has had a word, who has a vision, who realizes he has a person, has been thrown in jail, and he says, it's okay, it's good, and it's beneficial not only to me, but to others as well, because the gospel is being preached. Let's pray real quick. Father, Lord, I again ask that you would help me to deliver your message, deliver your word today. And I pray that, Lord, your Holy Spirit would begin to speak and to work into our hearts and lives. May we be encouraged and yet challenged today at the same time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. While we need a word like we spoke about last week, it will also require faith. Say faith. When you get a word, it's going to require faith for you to continue to live that life out in the purpose in which He has called you and to live in power. When God speaks to us and gives us a word, it will challenge us often in more ways than one. But I can tell you this, that it will require that we live by faith. And we're going to see that, I think, by the end of today. Because when we come to a relationship with Christ, it is by faith that we have been saved, right? And by no other way. Isn't that what the Scripture says? Right? So to live in Christ... Is if we have to come to Him by faith, then we also need to learn to live in Him by faith. Because as we said, right, we live by faith and not by sight. So when we look back over this passage this morning, we can clearly see that there is a need for faith as we live out our life in Christ. I want us to jump back to verse 27 again. I want to read this again as Paul has been struggling here in dealing with life in the situation he finds himself in. But I want you to see this again in 27 through 30. It says, Only let your manner be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving one by side by side for the faith of the gospel and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that it is from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in Him, that's faith again, 
but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. You see that Paul is saying the only reason that I can stay where I'm at right now in this prison and believe that the gospel is being perpetrated throughout the nation and the surrounding areas is because of the faith that I have and you too also need to have that very same faith that I am exhibiting so that the message can continue through you. What does this life of faith look like? It will be a willingness to trust God with your future. He has a future for you. And that future will require you to live in faith. It will mean that you will have to be willing to dream and to have a vision and then be willing to take a step of faith into the unknown. Aren't you glad He knows where you're at now? Aren't you glad He knows where He's leading you? See, then we can have some confidence in that. He's going to lead us. He's going to guide us. He's going to give us a vision. He's going to give us a purpose. And it's going to, and we're going to see this, but it's going to be a big one. And you're going to have to step out in faith. But know that He's with you. We'll see this. We're going to address this today. So let me say this again. Get a word, get a vision, and live by faith. Because that's the only way your vision, that's the only way your word is going to come about, is by you living by faith. If you don't live by faith, you'll never receive that dream. You'll never receive that vision. And that's kind of what I'm hoping we can grasp today. So today I want us to look at four things. The first thing I want us to see is this. That we have to be willing to see into the realm of the unknown. We have to be able to be willing to see into the realm of the unknown. What do I mean? Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says what? For we live by faith, not by sight. How many of you know what tomorrow is going to hold for you? You might have an idea, right? Like you might have a schedule. You might know i got to be to work at a certain time. You might know you have a meeting tomorrow. You might know you have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. But we really don't know, do we, what's going to happen tomorrow. Right? I was talking to Brian this morning before service. He, he, I said, how was work this week? He goes, not good. You didn't probably know you were going to be climbing up a mountain, did you? <laughs> Sometimes we have a vision and we have an idea what the world might hold or what our, our, our task might hold. But God sees things that we can't see. And we have to be willing to, if we want to go somewhere with Him, we have to be willing to be open to what the unseen might be. And live by faith. Hebrews chapter 1, and I didn't mention this last week, but I told you I would talk about it today. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, it talks about faith. Very familiar passage of Scripture about faith. Probably the most famous one. And it says this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Right? Hope. That's unseen. Hoped for. Not things that we know. You don't need faith for what you know. For the evidence of that thing, or for excuse me, hope for, the evidence of things not yet seen. That's faith. Living by faith will require us to live life, listen to this, by different principles than the world. Because the world doesn't live by faith. You need to hear this today. The world lives by sight. When they see a problem, what do they do? Call Dr. Laura. Go on Oprah, seek out Ellen, seek out Steve, huh? Steve Harvey, right? What do they do? Dr. Phil? See, these people, they don't have the knowledge, and so they're looking for the knowledge, but they keep living by what they think is necessary rather than by trusting in the Lord and living by faith. It will mean that we will have to trust God rather than in ourself or in our principles or in some other philosophy that somebody might throw out there. Because when He gives you a word, it will be big. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. It will mean that when things don't, listen to this, when things don't look good in the natural, that you will still have to walk by the principles of the Word of God. Because things are going to come in our life. We talked about that recently, right? Things just kind of grab us. Things just kind of latch onto us. Things just kind of happen to our life. I was looking through, after I had written this, I was flipping through Facebook the other day. 
And a minister friend of mine, he actually runs a small Bible college in Grand Rapids, Michigan, in North Point Bible College, and he had a special guest speaker in who happens to be a retired pastor from the Michigan district that I know. And this is what he was talking to the students about as they were in chapel that day. He said this. He says, having faith means accepting his timing. We all need a vibrant faith that appeals to the Lord, but also a patient faith that waits on Him. <laughs> the Lord, when He gives you a vision, or when the Lord gives you a word, or when the Lord gives you something to hang on to, guess what? It's going to require faith, and it doesn't mean it's going to happen today. It might take some time. I think one of the greatest examples of faith that I have ever seen, and I, I refer to it often, I may have alluded to it here before, but I remember one day watching a cartoon. I don't even remember what the cartoon was. But there was this character on this cartoon who is running, is kind of being chased, and, or just needs to find a way to the other side of this gorge. And there's a little sign right by this path that he was on that it says, take a step and the bridge will appear. Because there's no bridge there. And here's this huge gorge. And like I said, this character is kind of being chased and he, he, he doesn't know what to do. And so he steps out and he like, you know, does what you and I would do, right? Just like I'm doing here, right? And we step out and just kind of like holds his foot there and doesn't know what to do. And finally, he's like, he just keeps moving. And as he puts his foot down, a little plank appears underneath his foot. Now, how many of you know that that would encourage you a little bit? Well, needing to get to the other side, he decides to take his next step and step out. Now, he's standing on the one plank that has appeared and the land is behind him now and begins to step out again. And as he steps out again, another plank appears. And his faith begins to get encouraged. And so he takes the next step and the next step and the next step. But you know what happened? It's going to be a big vision. It's going to be huge. Don't get overwhelmed by it. Just understand that when he, you ask him, give me a vision, give me a word, expect to have something bigger than you can handle yourself. But that's okay, because then it requires us to live by faith. How many of you, if you had a coworker come to you and said, hey, I figured out how to make a square bubble. And something you got kind of lifting your head, looking at me like a square bubble. That's the reaction that you probably would have, right? You'd be. How many of you already 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 said to yourself, "That's impossible." Come on, raise your hand, right? Why? Because in our mind, a bubble is not square. A bubble is round. It's spherical, isn't it? Now follow me for just a second, because this is what's happened in life. There have been people. Not necessarily that they had a vision of making a square bubble, but they've had a vision of many different things. And when they shared that vision with people, go back to Joseph, people laughed at them. People said, you're nuts. You're crazy. People like Jesus had a vision that many people would think is weird. You had Columbus who wanted to find a new country. You have Darwin. You've had others that have come out on the scene. You have people like Steve Jobs and other people like Bill Gates that have said, I have a vision and a dream of creating something. And people laughed at them. How many people are laughing at them now? Why? Because they had a big dream that they chose to walk out in whether somebody believed them or not. 
It makes a difference. The ideas that will carry us forward and move us forward are already going to be birthed within us if we will seek God and say, Father, what do you have for me? And He's going to give you a big idea. And some people may not believe you. Some many people may think it's not possible. But if it's a God idea, it's not just a good idea. It's a big idea that He can and He will make happen. But you've got to live by faith. All the world's greatest impacts came from big ideas. The most important things that we live by today, people that have created telephones and cell phones and internet and electricity, all that stuff has changed our lives because somebody said, I believe. I thought of Noah. That was a big idea. God said, Noah, I want you to build an ark. What's an ark? Build a boat. It's going to rain. What's rain? That's a big idea. But how many of you know, you wouldn't be here today if Noah didn't have faith. He had a big idea. And he walked that faith out. And it didn't happen right away. It was a hundred years. We don't even live to be a hundred. And some of us think, I I don't know if I can survive ten years with this dream. Is it a God dream? Is it a God dream? Mary believed when the angel came and said that she was going to bear the very Son of God. If we don't need faith to live out this life, listen to this, if we don't need faith to live out this life, then can I encourage you to ask yourself if you need a new vision or a word or a purpose? Because we can clearly see from Scripture that when that we will need faith to lead this life. And that means that we need to trust Him because He has birthed within us a need for Him to accomplish purpose in our life. If your life isn't wrecking... If you're, excuse me. If your life... Listen to this. And I know this may be straightforward, but I need you to hear this because I added this this morning as I was praying. If your life isn't requiring faith, then please examine your life and ask for a bigger vision that requires faith from the Father. Because if you don't have a word and you don't have a vision, my concern for you is that you are living by sight. And that can be a very dangerous place to be. My third point is this. That if we have this dream and we have this vision, then we have to have the empowerment of His Holy Spirit. Paul was a proponent of the Holy Spirit. We know that Paul was active in speaking in tongues and living by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why that I believe that he was able to go forth and to preach the Word. He was able to go into prisons and stay in prisons. He was able to be traveled and beaten and thrown and lost and all of that stuff. The reason he was able to do that because he understood that the Holy Spirit has come to give him comfort and power. When you look back at Philippians chapter 1, was Paul struggling? Yeah, he was saying, man, I would love to go to heaven, but listen, it's more important that the will of God be done. And that's living by faith. That's living by power. He was saying that it's all about what God wants to have happen in my life and through my life. And you can only say that when you are living by faith. Because when you live by faith, you have to die to yourself. This is great gospel preaching this morning. Right? Because we can't live by ourselves. We have the scripture says that you must die by your, you must die. You must be willing to take up your cross daily and follow Him. If we aren't willing to die to ourselves, then we're living by sight. If we're not willing to die by ourselves, then we're headed down the wrong path. We have to live by faith. And He says, if you will seek me, you will find me. I will give you a word. I will give you a vision that will be so big that it can only be fulfilled by you living by faith. But when you live by faith, then I will be able to rewards you because you are trusting in me. And you're going to need that Holy Spirit and power in order for that to happen. He is not, Paul's not so much fixated on the difficult situation as he is the glory of God. He is supremely confident and I believe he was relying on the Holy Spirit. And if you look back in the Old Testament in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, it says this, it's not by power by might, by power, right? But by the Spirit, says the Lord Almighty. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. 
You need the power in your life in order to fulfill the dream and the vision that He has given to you. If you don't have that, you're going to struggle. Because it's going to battle you and you're going to be caught up in living in sight rather than living by faith. My fourth point is this, and this is really good. I like this. Our mission's provision is from God. The mission's provision is from God. When He gives you a vision or a word, understand that since it is so big, He understands that you can't fulfill it yourself. But He can. Oh, that was a good place to really get excited. Maybe you're taking notes so much. See, when you see God, He's going to give you a vision that is so big, you're going to say, God, I can't do that. He says, you're right. Yes. You can't. You got it. Yes, you got it. What are you talking about? It's so big, you got to trust me. But, here's the good news. I've already got the provision. What does Psalm 50 verse 10 says? For every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. See, when He gives you the vision, when He gives you the dream, when He gives you the Word, don't worry about it. He'll take care of everything. How can we forget that ultimate sacrifice that He gave? He gave His own Son so that you and I would be free to have an incredible life. What does John 10, 10 says? That He has come to give you an abundant life. Yes. And I've shared this before. I believe that second half of that verse. Remember the first half says that the enemy has come only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life to the full. What I Here's what I really believe that Scripture means. It's not just salvation. I believe salvation is encompassed in that. But I believe what He really is wanting us to know and understand here is this, is that I have come to give you a vision. I have come to give you a word. I have come to give you a purpose that is bigger than yourself. And if you will live by faith and not by sight, then you will never be born in life and I will be able to bless you and you will have an abundant, filled, exciting life. But there are many that have neglected seeking the Word, getting the Word that they need to live by faith. And he says, I'm giving you the Word, but I've also got the power. I'm giving you the Word, but I've also got the provision. That's a great Word. Listen, Paul was willing to do whatever it took for God. And He gave His Son, Christ gave His Son, or God gave His Son, Jesus, so that we could have hope and life. Now, let me pause for just a second, take this just a little bit different direction. Because while God has the provision and God will provide, understand this, that often His provision comes through His people. It's through you. Paul got called by God to go spread the gospel. Sometimes he worked to provide for his needs. He said, there's been times I had plenty and there have been times that I have not had plenty. But it doesn't really matter because this life is not about me. It's all about him. But this is what often happened. That when Paul was in need and other brothers and sisters were in need, that the people of the church got together and sent him the things that he needed. Because God, listen, this is part of God's plan and it's part of God's vision for you to be involved in ministry whether you give of your finances and you give. Give of your time and talents. Because, listen, you have a dream, you have a word, His body has a word, His body has a vision, and the way that it often gets fulfilled, not because God can't just say, well, here it is all. He wants us to know and experience His power and His faith and to have our faith and courage. And so the way that He does that is says, the way that you are going to have that dream and vision fulfilled is not just by yourself. I will lead and guide and direct people and then they will help provide for your needs and then everyone will be blessed in the process. Oh my goodness. 
you guys got to get this word. That, that is, that's the gospel right there. He has gifted you. He has loved on you. He has given you gifts and dreams and visions. And that's why we send money to help our missionaries. But can I just say this? Sometimes giving money is the easy way out. If my wife was here, she'd be like, what are you doing? I'm just telling you the truth. You want to be blessed? Get a word, get a vision, get a dream. Follow His Spirit, follow His power. He'll lead and guide. And listen, when He does that and the congregations work together, that's when His kingdom is advanced. In the Old Testament, He said this. He says that He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. He provides the dream he provides the things we need for the dream and the vision that He gives and lays upon our heart. It, but He requires people to help fulfill that dream. Why? Oh, He can give it if He wants to give it. He just lavish it out. A million dollars could drop right here and I'd have the things that I would need to get done what I want to get done. But that's not what He wants. He wants you to be blessed in the process. And the way you get blessed and the way you grow in your faith and the way you know Him is by getting involved and trusting Him and walking in faith and power. And He will bless you and lead you and this place will explode. Yes. Never doubt the provision and the power of a providing God. If He gives you the dream and He gives you the word and He gives you the vision, He'll provide. Because He's the kind of God who wants to make sure that His kingdom is advanced. He just says, do you want to be involved in what I'm doing? Do you want to receive blessing? Do you want to be a part of what I'm doing? Let me conclude. Short, short conclusion today. Get a word, get a vision, and live by faith. It's that simple. And this is what I hope that you've gained today. Is that when He speaks, that He will lead. And He will provide. I also hope that your faith has been increased today and that you follow God no matter where He leads you. I feel like I preached this message before and said those very same words. I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but I just really, that's what the Lord gave me at the conclusion. Will you bow your heads and will you close your eyes?